Welcome everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at iEnumerable and first we'll basically have a little explanation on how it works and then we're going to take a deepish dive because it's not very deep, the topic is not that big. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get started. So a simple way to create an iEnumerable is you would do a public iEnumerable and let's pick a number. So we want the, these to generate numbers. And the thing about iEnumerable in other languages, it can be known as a generator, okay? So you use it to generate things. And here we'll just say get. This doesn't really need any fancy names. We'll just call it get. And what we just want to do is get our hands around what is actually happening when you use an iEnumerable. So all we're going to do is we're going to yield one and you will have to say yield return, okay? And then we'll yield return two. So why yield return? Why not just return? So a short explanation in words is when you have just return, you exit the function there and then. If you have yield return, you sort of throw out an, a value, but then you still carry on executing the function. And we will see how this happens in just a second. What I will do is I'll also just put steps in here so we can see in what order these execute. Okay, so let's go ahead, dump the one. We'll dump two here and three at the end here. So let's go ahead and quickly change these. Okay. So if I do get, so I will be getting my enumerable. So at this point, if I hover over this, this is an enumerable of int. I can go ahead and select stuff from here. Now, what I actually want to do is I want to just dump this. And what this will do is this will enumerate the list. So if I run this, I have one, two, three. And then I have a list as well. Okay. So what happens if I run this again? Well, I execute the list again. It's kind of like I'm executing a function. And then I'm executing it again. So let's go ahead and do the following. Because usually, you know, when we execute a function, we get a new value every single time. So let's go ahead, copy this and store this in a variable. We'll just call it E for enumerable. We'll store it in a get. We'll do E dump. And we will replace this get with an E as well. Okay. So now we're basically grabbing the same value. All right. If we run this. We still get the same result. So this is the whole point about a generator. When you trigger the generator, it will emit a value one by one. Okay. And you, every time you call a generator, you're triggering the generation of values. Okay. So to paint a clearer picture. Let's bring this in a more realistic example. So let's say that we have this enumerable and for each var e1 and e, let's actually rename the e2 enumerable. So it's a little bit easier and e1 will be e and I'll actually make a for each loop. And what we'll do is we will just dump e as the value. Okay. And what I will do before this is actually let's just run this first. Okay, so what you can see that happens is we execute one first, we give the return value, and then we enter the for loop, okay, and we dump it. We then ask the enumerable for the next value, and it basically says, right, uh, let's carry on from here into the next bit. So it has to execute two, and it goes into two, it returns two, and then we dump the two, and then it goes again. Do you have the next value? And then it basically has to go. Uh, all right, let me see if I have any other values. It goes to three and then there is nothing left. So it will basically say, I ain't got nothing. And then it will exit. Okay. And you will see a little bit more how this works when we do a custom implementation. But essentially what you might do, and this is a, a very realistic mistake that you can make, is essentially you can have an enumerable. And uh, let's just grab this value because I can't spell. And what you might do is you might grab the count, right? And what might happen is you might use the count and then you will reuse the enumerable. Okay. And we'll dump the count here. Okay. So what's going to happen is when we trigger the count to find out how many elements are inside this enumerable, we will need to enumerate the enumerable. Okay. The act of enumeration is essentially you're triggering the generator. Okay. You're going to start the generator. It's going to produce its values and then it will stop. The next time you need a value from it, 
you're going to trigger it again and it's going to generate the same values. Okay. And the way you use this generator is you don't grab all the values at once. What you do is it spits out a value, you process it, and then it spits out the next. This is meant to help you work with memory more efficient because you're not allocating like a thousand items. You're processing one item at a time. So your only concern is that you don't enumerate the list more than once. Okay. So if we run the code here, what you will see is we enumerated the first time to output the count, and then we enumerate the third time, sorry, second time. But then again, we use the value one by one. What you can do is instead of enumerable, what I will do is I will commit this out and I will paste the enumerable, enumerable here and we will call a to list on this. And instead of enumerable, I'll say that this is a list now. And we don't need to call the count function on the list. We can just call count. And what will happen now is you will see once we call the to list, okay, we enumerate then and there, and then we convert that list, uh, that enumerated list to a list. And then we can basically check the count. We can iterate that. So if you have to do more than one operation on the values generated by the enumerable, you want to list them, but be aware that you are allocating memory. But this is not really a problem in our day and age. We have a lot of memory to spare. But do bear in mind if you're working with gigabytes of memory, you might take this into you might want to take this into consideration. Uh, let's go ahead and have a last example of the enumerable. I will uh, comment all of these out. I will grab my enumerable and go down here. And what I will do is I just want to again kind of and place that mental image of items going through one by one by one, especially when you're using link. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the number, so number is less than 10. And because we only have two numbers, that's all that's going to happen. Okay. But then what I'm going to do is whenever I consume this number, I'm also going to dump it and I'm going to say where, all right. So this is going to happen in the where clause. And we're going to have a number value and on top it's going to say where. And what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to run select and I'm just going to select the number itself. Okay. So I'm just going to return the number. I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing the number as the number. So it's a very pointless select statement other than I want to explain what's, ha what's actually happening. Right. So we're going to do dump and we're going to select here. And what I'm going to do on the end is because if I run this, there is no actual reason to know about the values, what we have created here is an enumerable. These will return enumerables as well. So we essentially grabbed the generator or an enumerable in C sharp, which is essentially a generator and the enumerable are the same things. And we have gone ahead and extended it once. We basically took the generator and we said, right, you also do this thing now. And then we put the select statement on it and said, you do this thing now as well. So what we actually need to do is we need to enumerate it, trigger it. We basically need to ask for a value back, right? When we ask for a value, that's when we start enumerating the generator or trigger the generator. And this is why when you call to list or first or default or count, you need to know something about the items in the generator. And that's when the enumeration triggers. So let's go ahead and just trigger the count on here, just so we trigger the enumeration. And what I want to C is the flow of the item. Okay. So, uh, the number one is the one I'll put it here. Once we return the one from the get method or the generator, it will first go for the where clause and then it will go for the select clause and that's it. And then it basically returns to the get generator and asks for the next value. And then again, it goes for the where, and then it goes for the select. And then it goes, do you have the next value? And then it basically says, I'll put three. No, nah, there's nothing left. All right. And that's essentially it. Just realize that a generator or an enumerable emits a value one by one. So that's enough for a quick overview of the enumerable. Let's go ahead and have a deepish dive into a custom simple implementation of the enumerable object, which this function really creates. We'll have a cl closer look at it later on. So what we want to achieve is a generation of values and uh, basically having sort of like a function through which we put the first value before grabbing the next value. So all we really have is a loop 
with a state machine from which we grab the value depending on where we are. Okay, that's all a generator is. So let's go ahead and create a public class uh, my simple gen, gen for generator, right? And uh, we will just have a, not a public, let's just have an integer value that we will try to expose. And we will just say, can we grab the next value? All right, so public, bool, as value and uh, we will appease the same condition where our condition will really be is our number below two and we start at one so let's go ahead and do that we will start at one and we'll say if value is bigger than two then we have no more values otherwise we want to return true okay and then we want to be able to get this value so let's go ahead and say a public int get value or maybe rather just make it big value and return the underscore value. Okay, so what can happen now? Now we can have a while loop where we can essentially use our generator. So, or, let, or let's call it simple gen equals new my simple gen. And we'll use the simple gen to check if it has a value, right? Do you have a value? If so, execute. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the value from simple gen value and let's go ahead and dump the value, right? So we'll do dump on the value and you'll notice here it's an infinite loop. So let's me, let me go ahead and stop that. And every time we get the value, we will increment it. All right. So we'll actually run in into this if statement. All right. So we get the one and two, uh, maybe to just get a more of a clearer perspective on this I will dump these numbers as well so every time we try to check for a has value what I will do is I will output this value here and let's go ahead and run this so you can see that the result is pretty much identical we have a generator we kind of do a loop over it and there is some stuff that we do inside of it right it's just a difference in how we write code do we want to use yield returns to return the same type from a function and then that will kind of generate this class for us or do we want to be writing a new object every single time we need a generator kind of thing all right and then there is the whole link obstruction that you can have based on the generators which is quite nice so this is why the generators exist in this form they're a very common construct that we use in programming okay can actually take a look at this get function as well so one of my viewers suggested to me the alt shift R key bind to use the IL inspector. So I'm going to be using that to see what the compiler is doing with the I enumerable. So here I have my get function. And essentially, if we take a look at it, we can see that it's inheriting from I enumerable of type int I enumerable. That's just an I enumerable, I enumerator and I enumerator. So this I enumerator is generic. So what is happening here is we have a current value which is essentially what we have implemented as a value and here we also have the current which is the current value for us it would be our underscore value field we then also have the notable move next function which is kind of how we have has value field or sorry has value function where we check do we have the next value and look basically the takeaway here you can go through these functions uh, it's not going to tell you much other than Basically, the function that you write here gives you back an object, okay? And you can actually go ahead and implement these types of objects to yourself. So if we go back to the deepish dive, we will comment out our simple generator. And uh, below here, or actually, let's go back here. Let's uh, get some space here. And what we'll do is we'll create a for each loop. We'll create a var value in actual generator, right? So we'll go ahead and create an actual generator. A new my actual gen. Okay. I learned. Yeah, it's not gonna generate this for me. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and create this class public class uh, my actual gen. Uh, I will drop this down my simple gen so it's a little bit easier to see all of this thing. And uh, yeah, I want to remove these brackets. Those are not supposed to be there. So the primary thing that we're going to get here is first, there's going to be an error. And this uh, statement is going to say for each statement cannot operate on variables of type my actual gen because my actual gen does not contain a public 
instance definition for get enumerator. So basically all it's saying is that we need a function that will be named get enumerator. So let's go ahead and just simulate that. Eventually we will come up to the actual class that we've seen in the IL inspector. So public void get enumerator. I think that's what it was asking for. Yeah, and void does not contain a definition for current is our next error. And essentially what this is going to be leading up to is that you need specific classes with specific fields in order to make this syntax work. So let's go ahead and inherit from the same things that that class was inheriting and we'll slowly build up this generator class. So let's go ahead and inherit from an enumerable of int. We'll generate a couple of functions. So because we have an enumerator here, uh, this uh, enumerator has been generated a little bit weirdly. So let's go ahead and remove this bit. And on here, we will remove this get enumerator. But on the beginning, we will have to type in public. Okay. This object will implement the enumerable interface. And now we want to return an enumerator interface. Okay. And in the actual implementation, that is being generated from this enumerable function implements both of these. So let's go ahead and make it so we can return this from here. Okay. So let's go ahead and implement this as well. So enumerator implement interface and let me hide the results. So it's a little bit easier to see. We'll have the current, which I mean, we can pretty much grab a couple of values from my simple gen and start filling these out. So we'll grab the value. We'll paste it here. We'll grab the actual name of the value. We'll put it here for the current that is essentially restating this. I don't know the exact reason why it's doing it. If anybody knows, leave a comment for the dispose. We're not doing anything worth disposing of like a stream or something like that. So leave it empty. Next was the get enumerator where, where we return this, which is fine. Then we have the move next function. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, copy what we did in the has value and not to run into the same error that we have run into before with the infinite loop where I see where you see I'm incrementing this value. I'm going to do the same for the current here. Okay. And if we decide to, for some reason, get the value for this current, the value will be incremented anyway. Okay. So, uh, going down next on the reset, what do we want to do if we want to reset in the middle of enumerating through our, my actual gen? Well, we have to set the value to zero or to one again, or basically the initial state, right? So let's just set it to one. Well, not, not too hard to implement this, but we have a really simple case and get, get enumerator is kind of the same scenario as we have with this current. I, again, I'm not, entirely sure what's not entirely sure why this is here but nevertheless all you can do is just basically return get enumerator and just return this as well okay and that's about it for the actual enumerator implementation all this allows you to do is essentially iterate through this for loop and comparing it to our loop essentially the only difference is the one line that we have to basically say we get the value here automatically here we have to extract the value manually ourselves but essentially this these two implementations are exactly the same so uh let's go ahead and run this and lo and behold i don't know where that phrase came from but no don't not sure exactly what it means but like look in all of its glory the result is exactly the same right and yeah that's pretty much the generator in a nutshell an explanation and a deep dive, the whole shebang. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. I also stream on Wednesdays and Sundays, starting around 6, 7 o'clock London time, so make sure you tune in for that. I also make announcements on Discord, so make sure you join that. And hopefully, I'll see you in my other episodes.